A Cuban passport is one of the few things Sylvia Wilhelm has left from her life growing up in Havana. At 14, she was an aspiring athlete when she left in 1961, with a small suitcase and a few dollars sewn into her dress. I was a pretty good swimmer. I left 85 medals behind and, of course, never saw them again. And that's what I hated the most. Wilhelm arrived in Miami as Fidel Castro was securing his hold in Cuba. She said her mother, who joined her later in Miami, thought their stay in Florida would last only a couple of months. They really thought, like people thought at the time, that the government was going too far to the left. There were rumors that Fidel Castro was a communist. Scores of Cuban families felt the same way. The U.S. Information Agency made this orientation film to address the flow of Cuban children into Miami. Nearly 8,000 so-called Pedro Pan children stayed in foster care, awaiting the arrival of their parents or relatives from Cuba. Some waited years while their families struggled to obtain exit visas from Castro's government. It's a refugee camp. Roberto is a refugee. The film is part of an extensive collection at Barry University in Miami. Sister Dorothy Gill is in charge of Pedro Pan materials at the Catholic school. Catholic leaders in Cuba helped arrange flights for children off the island. In Miami, Sister Dorothy says local pastor Reverend Brian Walsh saw that some children had nowhere to go. Father Walsh discovered this and spoke to the bishop, and the bishop said immediately, we've got to do something and get them together, whatever you can work out. Volunteers in Pedro Pan kept a registry of children arriving at Miami airport. Father Walsh ran a boarding home for several young men, while foster homes across the country took in children. I know there were nights when I would cry myself to sleep. I think of my parents that hadn't seen them in, in years, and I'm missing them. Jorge Finley was 11 when he arrived in Miami. His father was an airline executive, and both of his parents remained in Cuba to help other children get on flights out of the country. I marvel at the courage required to do that, because they, they did spend two weeks in jail. Finley was reunited with his parents after two years in foster care, but he says other Pedro Pan children were not as lucky. Not every story is, has a it maybe had a happy ending eventually because we got together with our parents for the, the overwhelming majority of us, or some of us did not. This month, Cuba's communist government celebrates 50 years in power. In a speech, President Raul Castro made no mention of the 14,000 children of Pedro Pan. In Miami, Sylvia Wilhelm says the experience has left a powerful mark on the first generation of Cuban exiles. I really think we as Cubans need to sit down and study this very, very seriously. This was a major exodus. Never has happened before in the history of the Western Hemisphere. And I hope it never happens again. Several waves of Cuban migrants have arrived in Miami since Pedro Pan. For the children who came alone, they say it is important their history is not forgotten. Brian Wagner, VOA News, Miami.